need to approve those minutes from the 21st. Any motions to do that? I'll move them, uh, approve the minutes. Thank you, Bruce. I'll second. Yep, second. Thank you, Rich. Uh, any discussion? Eyes? Aye. I guess eyes, Aye. any, any nose? Any, dis any abstentions? Okay, we're good. So our business tonight, uh, we have um, Representative Conley, I believe on, and Representative Dela Cruz. Thank you both for joining us tonight. Uh, Senator Summers is, is here as well. Oh, terrific. And Senator Summers, thank you very much. So we had, we had um, you guys had received a letter from Larry Grundy. Sadly, Larry can't be here tonight. He's in the uh, snow plowing business. So he's uh, keeping people safe tonight. So that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us. We had, um, we're, we're to the phase now where we had, as you guys know, we've talked to the town council, um, presented to them back um, in January and we're moving forward. Uh, they gave us some thoughts about uh, what they would like for us to see, what they'd like for us to do. Um, and we've gotten to the point now where, where one, of, one of the things is, you know, uh, uh, finances type of thing. So um, that's why we, to talk to you guys, we, we're trying to get information out there to the public um, and how we can all help each other go forward. So um, Jerry would probably like to step in because he has all the, the, the well, good uh, nitty gritty stuff. So go ahead, Jerry. Well, I guess, you know, we're aware that, uh, you know, kind of a, a preliminary placeholder um, bill has been put, you know, at least submitted. Um, and I, uh, Senator Summers, and I think uh, so, somebody, I think it might've been Christine Connolly, I think you might've sent uh, Larry uh, that bond request form for the state funding form. Um, and I guess the, the, the big question that we have, we don't have any, well, you know, we, we don't have a, a scope of work yet. We don't have, a, you know, a budget figure that we're looking for $10 million say. We don't know what that number is yet. And we have a study that's coming out. Um, it's being requested. The funding for the study is being requested in the uh, next year's budget for the town. We're spending $200,000 to do some studies to find out what it is that it's going to take to build these fields that the task force has uh, determined that there is a need for in the town. So, you know, I guess in terms of that budget form, I guess the biggest question we have is, is it too early for us to, you know, submit that with a, if we don't exactly have a dollar figure or is it, you know, so I guess that's, I guess we don't, there are three experts on the process and, and a whole bunch of people here who are just kind of wondering about how this whole thing works. So I guess the, the bottom line is we are very thankful that the three of you are um, have, have stepped forward and indicated your support of our uh, initiative here. And we're just looking for the best way uh, to, to work with you to make it move forward. Sure. Um, you know, Typically, the process you can put. In, I think we. I think I had this conversation with you, Jerry. I, I, if I remember correctly, it, it might have been. Um, it might have been uh, Larry. I don't. I can't remember. I thought I talked to you both, but you can put in a bill to request funding, and it goes to appropriates and it dies. So it's sort of a placeholder bill. It just you know it, that's just what happens. That's how the process works. So you can um, possibly get some money into the budget, maybe to help fund your. Um, you know, your, um, your review and putting together your financial package on what this would cost. But talking to Larry, he, uh, and you know, I don't know if Christine and Joe had the same conversation. He had estimated just kind of off the top of his head that it's about a million dollars a field and you wanted to do 10 fields. So if there is a bonding package, um, we really need to have the financial data because we, we put in the, the, the bonding request, and it's a whole process. You go and you talk to the people that are on the bonding commission. You have to work with the subcommittee, and then it's the governor who ultimately decides what goes on the bonding, the bonding agenda or not. But if you don't really have the backup, 
it, it makes it a little bit more difficult. A lot of the bonding that I've gotten through, um, you have to, they wanna see what the town's gonna do for a match because in our financial situation in the state, it would kind of be hard. I don't know if Joe and Christine agreed to ask for $10 million for, for fields in the, in the environment that we're in. Um, I know that all of us would like to help you as much as possible. I've already had conversations as I'm sure Joe and Christine have to try to see what is possible for Groton, what other funding uh, mechanisms that there are. But in order to get like a large package through, we really have to have the data on what it's gonna cost because if not, every town would be saying, can I have X amount for this? But I don't know what it's gonna cost. Um, I think we could all work together to try to get you some initial <laughs> financing to, to do the studies or if there's further studies or work that has to be done, but to, um, I personally think to get a bond request for a significant amount of money that's going to make a difference for the town, we really have to have the information. And then we can all work together to try to, you know, I can give you one. I did a senior center in Griswold that was a $7 million project. And to get bonding for them, they had to show that they were going to go to a referendum. I personally think that, you know, this is something that is referendum worthy for the town um, for X amount of dollars and, and then the state could match X amount. And, and usually bonding takes a little bit of time. So it's good that you're talking to us early because we can start to kind of lay the groundwork now. Uh, um, it's probably fairly rare that you get something large bonded in the first sweep because um, there's a lot of competing interests as you can imagine. But um, I think that the three of us together with all our different expertise could really work and help the town in a really favorable way. So. I just wanted to let you know that um, it's good that you're starting early, but it's it would be tough for us to put in like a large request without the data behind it. But we, I think we could all work together to get you something to get you going, if that is helpful at all. So I, I think you know the the next big thing that we have, you know, the study that we're going to do for two hundred thousand dollars is going to do conceptual designs and some architecture work and some surveys and things like that, and then you know from there we'll be able to come up with a you know, I, I think of what a what a build out figure is. And then from there, we would, and Chad, correct me if I'm wrong, we move on to some construction documents and things like that. But this $200,000, uh, these studies that we have coming in, you know, that, that would actually start potentially in July 1. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Chad, maybe you know how long those studies would take. And, at, you know, after a couple of months, say we have a, a figure, we would be able to submit this bonding form at the time we have that figure. So it's not like maybe a is it a, is there a time frame where it has to go in or is it no, just any go in any time? Okay. Um, so the thing is, if you have the conception, I'm, I'm not being devil's advocate. I'm just from my experience on these larger projects that we've been able to get through. If you have the detail and you know, that's kind of like the generic form. It's like, what is it going to cost? What is the town's share? Um, do you, have you guys talked to the council? If this is a $10 million project, I don't know if that's correct or not, obviously. I don't know if you're going to do it all at one time or in phases. Is it something that you've talked to the council? Are they willing? Other towns have gone out for referendums and said, we're going to spend whatever it is, $8 million on these new fields over X amount of time. Um, have you guys talked to the council or the RTM about that? Are they interested in doing anything like that? Or are you trying to raise all of this money separately from the town? Well, we have a town councilor on our call here. Uh, now, I don't know if I want to drive the bus over you, uh, Councillor Borderline, but maybe you can yeah. respond to that. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't want to speak on behalf of any other town councillors. Obviously, as you know, I stand very independent in my thoughts and my views on a lot of things. So I definitely do not want to speak on behalf of anybody. But I think they came before us and um, there's been no direction um, from what I can tell. They basically agreed to continue to uh, keep this task force going. Um, but uh, that, that's all I have at this time. I, I we need to get the town that. on board if you want to get a significant part of, of bonding. Uh, I, right. And, and I think the Board of Ed, uh, that, that's the other thing. And, I, and I'm not sure if they're, you know, all the people that are represented tonight. I mean, other towns, I'm, I'm Representative Connolly, I know you did a lot with Ledger, um, from my understanding. And I spoke to some folks out there and, you know, you, you were a big asset to helping them and really pushing forward, um, representing that district and, and doing such in the manner that you did. Uh, folks have spoken, stated that, um, you know, the Board of Ed was the driving force out there. Can you speak to that at all as to how that came to be and maybe some way that we can look at 
like trying to get that support perhaps? Uh, Ledger was able to get um, some fields, a, a variety of fields with some substantial state bonding. And um, I just wanted to touch base. Everything that Senator Summer said is absolutely correct. The House does have a slightly different bonding process than the Senate. It doesn't matter where the, they start. Um, the House, the forms are for the calendar year. So if you're doing calendar year 2021, you start with House in the House. Me too. There'll be a slightly different form, the exact same information. So if you are asking uh, for substantial money, you do need to have the the details, and it's okay if it's if you don't have them for six months. We can put it in whenever we whenever you have it. We don't want to rush you, um, but do make sure that you include the whole delegation so Senator Summers can work on the Senate end and we can work on the House end and work together on this. Um, Ledger Board of Ed was integral in getting started with the Ledger Field projects. Uh, we we're able to get a substantial amount of state money to really assist the town in not having to pay as much. There it was still town dollars involved in that. Um, and it did go through the Board of Ed budget and the town council. They have a finance committee instead of an RTM. So it went through the whole grouping there. Um, but this is you know, a big $10 million project. You do wanna make sure that you, you are talking to your counselors. Uh, John Burt has done the forms for a variety of projects. Uh, in the past, he has the forms every year. He's very aware as to what he needs as is public works. So you have paid staff who, who's done these processes before. So please utilize them. Yeah, you really need to have buy-in from the town for us to be able to advocate for large dollars. I mean, uh, if not, then it's just sort of this committee without, um, you know, backing that's asking for state dollars. So um, on some of the larger products projects that I've done in towns, it there's always, this is the match from the from the town, whether it be Board of Ed or, um, you know, the, 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 the council side, or we're going to um, have a referendum and bond this much towards this project in order to get the state to kick in large dollars. So I think that's important for everyone here to be able to, we, we can't advocate, I mean, we can, but it's difficult to advocate for a committee, what a committee wants if the town isn't behind it. And whether it's the council or the board of ed, who's you know, really going to take the lead, that's important for um, you all. And if, if it's helpful, I'm sure all of us would come to the meeting and say, we're willing to help whenever you have that meeting, however we best can. Um, so it, is it fair to say that like getting the town to support this board of ed, however we go, um, doesn't mean that it's going to increase tax dollars. I know number one, when we throw this out there, the first thing everyone says is how much is this going to cost? How much will our taxes go up? But to support something like this doesn't mean that you're supporting the tax dollar to go up. You're supporting the project first. So what you're saying or what I'm hearing possibly is we need people to say we support the project and let's figure out the dollar later and see what is available to the state. Is that fair to say to start and then we can decide later if it's going to really. be a tax increase or how no. would you, no. how would you they, recommend? I mean, they can that? say that's great that you're, you're about it. The, the state, if you want significant dollars and I could be wrong, I mean, you guys can correct me they want to see that the town of Groton is going to put their money where their mouth is. The state okay. is not going to just come and give you $10 million for your fields. They want to know yeah. that the town is going to contribute. However you want to do that. And yes, it will affect your tax dollars depending on what you have coming off of bonding. So the big, the big issue will be to get the community engaged and show that these fields are an integral part of the town, that they can be used for every age group, that they could actually increase economic development if you have different, I'm making this up, I don't know if this is true, different um, tournaments that come to town where people will be spending the night in a hotel and you know their kids will be there and they'll get to see other sites in Groton um, you know, and, and quality of life in Groton and it can be used at all age districts. I think you could throw the military in there. This is a military town. I think you could argue a lot of things, but they're, they're gonna wanna see that the community is behind it so that they are not you know, they're, they're going to want to see buy-in from the town on some level. I don't know if you guys disagree with me, but I, 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 actually, I, I think is... that you would, um, you basically, we have a blueprint already, uh, mm -hmm. the schools, we just did them. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think it's any different than how we went about doing the schools. I mean, the board of ed goes out yeah. and they get a, they get an education spec from the board of ed. You guys in this case would have a spec that is created by this, this commission that you have in town that says we need this many fields 
Uh, and this is what the plan is. And then when you get the study back, what we need, what we need from you guys is a shovel ready plan. So when we're asking for, for money, money, that we're just, we're not going there and saying, well, we think it might cost this much and we're mostly sure that they're going to pass it. Um, the one thing that you wouldn't be able to do is get the referendum passed, just like the school thing. Uh, we find out what we would, what the, what the state would be willing to bond for us. And then it goes to a vote. And then when a vote, when a voter goes into the booth and they know it's a $10 million project, but they weigh the $5 million that the state's given them against the project, they can, they can make a, a, an educated, you know, vote. And I would, I would just really look at it the same exact way we just did the schools. Cause that, that's actually what the process is, no matter, no matter what the project is, unless it's like under a couple hundred thousand or whatever their, whatever their limit is where you can have this almost like less discretion so they can take care of the smaller projects. But $10 million is gonna be just like us building a school. Yeah, I have not had the experience where you can go and you can say you're gonna get bonding for 5 million and the town's gonna to kick in 5 million. What I've experienced is the town has to pass the referendum that says, yes, we're gonna spend 5 million. And then we go try to get the yeah, match. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? You, you wouldn't be able to go in the voting booth and say, it's gonna cost 10 and we're, it, because it's not school construction, if that makes sense. I have not experienced that. Um, it's always like, they wanna see the town buy in first mm. and yeah. then they'll say, okay, well then we'll kick in this, but they're not gonna say, we'll kick in this if you guys haven't passed the referendum and people know what the total cost is, if that makes sense. Right. Um, yeah, the larger projects I've been on were the same as Senator Summers. There were sometimes when they went out to refer referendum, they said we would be applying for right. such and such state grants up to blank right. and then saying we, we hope to get our state funding and we expect our legislators to fully support this and the legislators said we fully support this we'll be fighting even your smaller amounts i'm working with a much smaller project with ledger right now and it's come up on a few almost ready for bonding agendas and the answer from the um, bonding committee has been is the town still ready to kick in their portion of x dollars mm. very small amount but they are wanting from uh the mayor updates like you guys still okay you didn't you know especially during covid you still have this money ready to go for this project is this project still shovel ready so it is important that the financiers are there but we're we're here for you we did the first step we don't want to rush you or or slow you down either so we're ready to move may i uh, just ask a, a question here I i'm wondering um you know you, you were kind of talking about this as if we're going to to referendum one of the things that the town council has asked this athletic fields task force to do is to kind of prioritize the field projects you know like so if we had to build you know two fields first what two fields would those be and then what would we build and then what would we build and then what would we build you know in a cip type situation so I guess I'm wondering from a state funding perspective, it is, is that advantageous or is that disadvantageous? You know, the, the, big, the big lump sum referendum project where we do it all, is, that sounds like it's more likely to get state funding than doing it a little bit at a time. Is that, is that accurate? I mean, that's, what the, that's the town's decision. I think it's you know, piecemealing it is more difficult, I think, for, for us, because each year we'd be going back saying, can we have another, can we bond another million dollars? Can we, you know, can we do this? And plus for you, from a cost standpoint, I'm not sure if that makes sense to go out, you know, and do it. I mean, I feel like you'll never get there in CIP. It's just, that's a lot to put away. Um, and other towns that I've worked with, they've made a commitment. We're going to create this recreational center, and this is what we're going to do, and we're going to we have a plan over the next, whatever it is, year and a half, and we're gonna have this state-of-the-art recreational center ready to go for tournaments and this, blah, blah, blah. And they do what we did for um, 2020. They go out, they get a group of people together, they try to market it, they do, inf you know, not infomercials, I'm saying that because we're in this virtual world of info information all the time, but you know, they get buy-in and people are, I actually will tell you that the people I've talked to are excited about this project. They, they know that we need fields from Navy folks that wanna go play soccer. The one thing I do hear is they wanna make sure that these fields can be used, um, not just for 
you know, organized sports, but that people can do like a pickup game of whatever soccer and they can go use it. So I didn't, I don't have any of the details. So I just said, oh, I'm sure that's up for conversation. Um, but I think, um, especially now in this time of COVID and everybody being outdoors and using, uh, you know, our parks and, and being outdoors more, there's an opportunity to, you know, talk to people about this. I think it's actually good timing because so many people are out and about. Um, I just, my fear, if you really want to do this is, I remember like the CIPs, they're so easy to cut every year when you're scrambling for dollars. It's like, you know, trying to get a sidewalk or you know, a sign, it just takes forever. And, um, and then you'll have, you know, councils change over and then you have people that are like, yeah, I hate sports. We're not doing this, you know, whatever. So that would be my only thing, um, you know, go big or go home kind of thing. And, and maybe like right now, because the, uh, the bonding rates are not, creeping up right now, maybe it's a good time. I'm not saying that you should do that, but that's just an opportunity that you have. And it might be easier for us to <clears throat> go one time and say Groton needs this much rather than having us go back every year, you know, depending on, and, and the finances of the state are not getting any better. I'll tell you, like the deficits are getting bigger and bigger. So, um, and bonding is getting tougher and tougher because of our bonding cap. So. So what, what can you guys recommend as far as dollar limits go? I mean, if we're talking, we're throwing a $10 million number out there as kind of a big round number. Um, with the school projects, there's all, each town kind of has their percentage that they're likely to get. And when you're talking with the town residents or the town council, you can say, hey, it's likely to be 50%, 60%, whatever that is. This obviously isn't that. So, we're, you know, I think part of the reservation from the council, everybody said, yes, we need these, we fully support it. But then it was, well, how much is it going to cost, right? And so mm -hmm. if, if we have an idea, you know, if it's 10 million, should we be thinking, expecting a 50-50 or a 60-40 one way or the other? Or a, I don't think there's any set formula, you no. know, and, but I do Not think you have feels. an argument. You have a, a community that, um, you know, is, um, has a lot of, a third of its population is military. You, you could look at the, the demographics and the socioeconomic Standing, you know, Groton just got a ton of money from the CARES Act because of the the income level. So there's things to argue. I just don't. We can't give you a. It's a because this is this is myself, Joe, and Christine begging for dollars, like trying to get as much as we can. There's no formula. It's not like, oh, fields are at this percentage. I mean, my, just my gut would be we. I. I. I don't even know what to tell you honestly. What my gut? Two million, three million, something like that, maybe. So would you guys say it's different for us because like we're not the council or the board of ed requesting like we're a task force of like parents mm -hmm. uh, invested folks that basically are trying to rise up and say we need this done so we can't do it for other, you we need the we need the time right right it. and but but we're trying to bring it to light is what mm -hmm. we're trying to do you know yeah, you're, you're so, the first step. yeah. so i think you guys saying there's state money bonding available Right. Let's let's start working. Let's get our buy-in, either right. board of ed or town council, yeah, and start working towards the goal. Right. And your legislative team's behind you on this. And yeah, I mean, you could say that, but I wish there was a way that we could say it's a. There's no for. It's not like the schools with a formula. We just th that doesn't exist. Yeah, I just okay. don't want to okay. ask for way more than we should. I you know like you should ask for as much as you possibly can. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't disagree, but yes, and I don't want to. We'll try you know. to get you something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, but we can also go to other towns because when we won't, we won't be the only town that's done a field project in the last fifty years. It, it's it's happened in other towns, and and maybe we'll do just ask them to do a little research for us and see what was given in a bonding package because a lot of times, uh, there if there's a precedent set and then you know not not saying that they'd be stuck to that percentage, but uh, at least we'd have some kind of a starting point. Yeah, the last couple of years, the range is pretty wide and it has to do with the town's need and then the individual legislators need. Um, yeah. Joe, you know how those, how those deals are. I know, I know. And I will tell you like the speaker last year who's been there forever, I think he got like $2 million for a turf field. For and football field. Like, oh my God, he got a $2 million turf field. So that was a big deal for, for him to get that. So that kind of gives you a perspective of the dollars spent on fields. Speaking um, of uh, turf fields... Oh, yeah. um, I know what you're going to well, say. No, I got. I, I, I just, you know, I, I wanted to ask Joe and Chris and Heather first off. Um, I think we're already a little bit behind the eight ball because the Groton um, 
uh, environment, whatever they are, <clears throat> excuse me. Conservation, conservation associates, um, you know, went to the council to um, argue against um, the artificial turf. And so, um, you know, clearly on the council side of things, there were clearly some people who were like, oh, hmm, you know, we, we need you to look at that more, you know, we need you to look at it deeper. And I'm wondering if, you know, if, if from our legislative group, if um, you have an opinion about the artificial fields or if you're, you know, uh, you know how, to, how to deal with it. Because if, we, if we're gonna get, it's like the chicken and the egg, if we're gonna get the, the council buy-in, mm -hmm. then there has to be a decision made, I think, about whether it's artificial turf or not. Um, and we want, I'm sorry, just one more thing. And we don't want it to be an issue if we did go to a referendum. So, I don't know um, how much artificial <laughs> turf costs, but I think all the other towns, except for maybe one or two, have artificial turf, don't they? Yes, they do. Okay. Exactly. So, and yep. I know that yep. what limited knowledge I have about fields that they're, they, they wear better. You know, I know like all the issues we have with uh, Poconic Plains, like you can't use it sometimes, although it's a beautiful field. So I think that would be a decision that you all would have to make when you present it to the council and kind of argue why you need this, that, and the other thing. I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. Can a conservation committee say you can't? Well, I don't, I don't know about the rest of the, the field. The I don't know how that works. I don't know about um, the rest of our committee, but um, my feeling is if we make a recommendation of turf fields, mm -hmm. are they all turf? turf? Is that how it works? No, not all of them, but okay. the but there's some that are. If we made the recommendation that those ones we want to be artificial turf or artificial turf, and the council, you know, says we go forward, there's going to be that that um, I, I, they're not going to give it up. You know, they're not going to give it up, and, um, and, that, so we and that's going to be there. That'll That's going to be there no matter what. But I think the, the fields that we just put up at the junior high are actually artificial turf, if, I, if, if I'm correct. Yeah, they are. The they are. are. Yeah. So, I mean, but we have a little... That doesn't seem to matter, yeah. That's where I got all of my knowledge about artificial turf was, was going through the school and, the, mm -hmm. and, and listening to all the different fields that they have. One thing I... The only difference is it, to make it simple for people is you can vinyl side your house or you can put up wood and paint it every five years. It, it's, one, it's a maintenance issue is what mm -hmm. it is. And I, th I think I felt pretty comfortable uh, that we got past the safety issues. Uh, but if they have some, if there's a reason that, that they don't like them, they, they'd have to convince the council, they have to convince the, this field commission that you guys have that, that it is the wrong way to go. And it, it doesn't sound like, I think dollar for dollar for dollar, it sounds like the artificial is the way to go. And unless they came up with something, you know, mm -hmm. the football, the injury was what what stopped the fields back in the eighties and nineties, but it seems like they've they've beat that or well, can't they've you know gone past that technology yeah. got better. So yeah, that, I I'll played on the. Show. I'll send you the. Um, I'll yeah. send you guys the presentation they made to council. Yeah, I played on the fields back in the nineties, so I've I've gotten injured on those bad fields, <laughs> um, but I know technology's come a long way. I think Joe Heather and I are used to people coming at us from different angles with different viewpoints. Yeah. And I, that's I part of this. our daily business. So if you have a different viewpoint, get more people to the meeting than right. the conservation people got to the meeting. Mm -hmm. and, and the other point is, is that, you know, no matter the health concern or not, which I'm all for health first, the surrounding towns, the, the, the argument that our town will have this and there will be a problem for our kids here. Well, are they not going to be allowed to play Stonington? Are you going to hold your kid back and say, all right, Johnny, you know, you're not going to play against Stonington on Friday because, you know, what? I don't think the field is safe. And you know what? You're not going to play New London on that beautiful turf field because it's not safe either. Like, no matter what we decide in this town, the other towns have that. So we can we can take the safest approach we want and do non-artificial, which fine, if that's what people want. But the children are still going to have to play competitively on turf fields everywhere else. And as you advance in your, in your, for track, for cross country, as I look at Coach Costa, because I have to call him Coach Costa because he's my coach. No matter what we decide here in Groton, when you advance, if you're an advanced athlete and you head on to like, I, I think back to Hershey track and field when I used to do that back in the day with, uh, uh, oh God, like Mr. Sharp, Sharples uh, back, in the, you know, you'd get end up in New Britain on the most amazing turf back in the early, late 80s, early 90s when I was in middle school and they had it out there. I was up in New York going, you know, going to Pennsylvania. They already had the turf when I'd go to the Hershey track. So 
the risk was there and I, and I'm not trying to mitigate the risk or say that it's not an issue. The problem is, is the issue is all around us. So it depends on where we want to meet that risk, but no matter the athlete, unless you're going to isolate them and say, you only can play on our non artificial turf here at Fitch and my student will not be present anywhere else. They're going to play on it. There's also indoor track. Indoor track is an artificial tur turf. Has anyone talked about those? What is in those? So it's not just the outside. Everyone's worried about the outside environmental risk where you're exposed to the air, but the inside environmental risk when you go to an indoor track with no ventilation and you're all packed in like sardines and Coach Costa's smiling because we remember those meets, we don't even know what's going on there. So I guess... I don't know. I, I feel like we need the buy-in. Yeah. And we all lived, we yeah. lived through all that. So these kids will live, you know, yeah. well, I, I don't want to really honestly get into the debate of, of turf or non-turf, but I, my suggestion would be for you to present it in a financial way also, because obviously artificial turf is safe enough that other schools are using it, but look at one of the things people don't look at, like Joe was saying, look at the long-term maintenance costs of a non-turf versus turf you know, turf costs this, but this is what it's going to cost the town over the X amount of years. And if it works out to be beneficial, then that sounds like that's a good way to, to show it financially. Um, and, you know, you can roll in that everybody else has a turf field, so it can't be that unsafe, so to speak. And technology has improved. But if you approach it that way, because the maintenance costs to maintain a non-turf field are exorbitantly high. And then you run into the problem when the CIP is like, again, okay, let's cut down on the maintenance on these new fields that we just did because we don't have enough money. So I, I would approach it that way and then get buy-in. And, and you know that could be the Achilles teal, heel of trying to get something passed where people don't like turf or they do like turf, but I think- Well, you Chad rally. made a very thorough presentation on that point. Yeah. I think that the majority of the people on the board were against it because of the report that was given to them. So I don't know- you know how we could overcome that just from your conversation it sounds like you guys are on board with it but it didn't seem like many of those other board members were what about the well, ada compliance aspect i i i, I long for these conversations again i think the delegation will tell you that, that that these are these are the conversations that we all had before we went up to harford and now it's all it's 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 just not as personal as, as we're talking about with with this turf issue i will say one thing about who likes turf and who doesn't we just had a school referendum that was the largest project that Groton's ever done. And all of those fields came out with turf on them. Mm -hmm. So someone at some point, I'm, and I'm sure those same folks that are making the arguments against these fields made the same arguments against the fields at the schools uh, and, and look what they are. So I think overall, it's the Groton's already proven uh, at the voter, at, at the booth, <clears throat> that they, they're willing to get the maintenance of, of, a, of a field like that. So you know, this precedence that we voted for that type of field. And it was a big issue when we were going through school. That was a huge discussion. So to me, it's already been kind of argued and, and won in a sense. But I, you know, that's going to be you guys, you guys come up with your plan. And I think, uh, I think you'll be able to convince people. And it is, I think, I think they're safe. Yeah. And I think with us, with bills and ideas, people come to us 20, 30, 40 times, sometimes over multiple years till we've dealt with you know, everyone's wrapped their head around the details and asked their questions and thought about things. Just because one meeting didn't go optimally doesn't mean the next meetings don't go better. Mm. You know, we talk about the same issues that you guys talk about just with more zeros behind the dollars. Yeah. Um, and we often talk about them for many years and continue to talk about them. What about the APA <laughs> compliance aspect? I mean, that's, so let's take the turf out of it as Heather Summers stated. Uh, Senators, uh, sorry, Senator Summers. Uh, we're not in an ABA compliance. Our bathrooms, our bleachers, like is there any extra funding out there to help us on that? Is there any caveats to help when we look at the big picture, turf, non-turf? Like just screaming out loud, like parents go to the graduation at Fitch and they're not able to get up into the stands to be with their, their family members. They have to sit below and, and watch graduation or a football game at eye level through a fence because they're in a wheelchair. The bathrooms are not handicap accessible. The field house is not gender neutral. We have you know, gender equality issues in our town. So it's not just a turf natural, it's gender equality, it's uh, ABA compliance issues and our facilities lack for people to um, attend sports and have a bathroom of use. The baseball field, which was renovated not that long ago, 10, 15 years, there's no, there's no bathroom down there. If the building of the school is open, you have one. If not, a porta potty. If you go to a tennis match, we have a porta potty. People who are sick, immune compromised, or handicapped cannot use those types of facilities. And so we're so, so I'm trying to like get people to think outside the box behind, you know, like it's not just 
a turf, non-turf, fine. You don't want to put turf, then give me a natural field. Well, let's get ABA compliant. Let's get our, our, our facilities up to spec so families can feel comfortable to use them. So is there any extra funding or things that we should think about when we're looking at this to make sure we're, we're meeting all those needs as well? Well, I think that would be part of your plan. It's not extra funding. It would be part of your plan to upgrade your field house or your facilities. And that baseball field, by the way, was donated <laughs> by a, a private donor. Um, but, and I don't think he wanted to spend the extra money on the toilets, um, which I can understand. It was really I understand that, but the town didn't want to kick in any extra at the time. Right. We looked at so I think that would be part of your package that you put together. You know, it would not only are we doing fields, but we're upgrading to be ADA compliant or, you know, put it, roll it all in. I don't, again, I don't think there's any extra additional dollars that, um, you know, are automatically given in bonding because you're doing that, but it gives us more to talk about to try to, you know, argue the fact. Um, yeah. And when, and I think you're just going to have to get grassrootsy and try to get folks to come on board with the idea of a turf field versus a non-turf field. And I think the maintenance cost is a good way to show it. And you had great points, um, Councilor Borderlawn, saying, look, every other town is has this. So, you know, if you're playing football and Groton is Groton the only field that you can play on because it would not have a turf field. So I, I think that really is a good perspective and the way to sell, sell, sell the idea. Yeah, you're, you pay for a lot of support. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, I think a lot of people love it, but Thank I think you. your paperwork, just remember, you're gonna have the top number and then you're gonna have to line item just like you do every other thing that you see in your budget. So what the field house is, what the ADA is and make sure that that's clear. I think people, people want to make things more ADA compliant but everything has a price line, everything has a cost, and each cost line does give us different pros and cons to talk about. So if you, if you have wiggle room in something and you can call you know, ADA compliance and list all the things you're doing, kind of showing how much you're improving the ADA access, that's something else we can talk about. If you want help with that, I think we'll be happy to help you kind of go through once you get your cost estimates maybe how to uh, market it the best or, or provide insight. You don't have to do what we wish, but we could provide insight onto how to uh, market your cost insights. And Portia, you being on the, the council, you can you know, bring that perspective back to the council too, you know, as, as the person who's on this. I don't, are you the only counselor on this um, task force? Currently, but once again, I speak, you know, my, my individual thoughts are always my individual thoughts as nine elected individuals, maybe all from the same party, we all bring a different caveat to that. So, you know, what I speak of or what I want doesn't necessarily, but I can definitely represent that, that, that viewpoint. And, um, you know, it's the, the counselor's decision if they want to take on that. And actually, I think Councillor Franco has expressed a great interest in, in, in support of fields. And I, and I think the council as a whole, without speaking for them, has you know, obviously created this task force, so they've showed interest, um, but where that's going to go and how we as a town wrap around and decide to support this is another thing, because let's face it, as the council stands, this has been a, I graduated in 98, nothing's been updated since 98, and as you stated tonight, um, all those CIPs that have gone before us from formal, former councilors have never gone through, so the town has a way in which we bypass that and the CIPs don't work, so piecemealing it, partially funding it, picking our, our, our top four priorities or two priorities, um, as you stated tonight, uh, Senator Summers, whoever comes in next can just kind of chop that. And so how do we as a town move forward to make this a priority? And I would like to personally see the Board of Ed create a facilities uh, team uh, building in and, and kind of take this on as their, their thing, as they create new programs in our town, they then oversee the, the ability and the flexibility and the priority to make sure that we fund our fields and become the, you know, the, the driving force like other towns do. We are a little unique here. Council will make a decision, but I think Board of Ed, in my opinion, should be the driving force behind this, um, especially for the high school. But, but the, uh, I will tell you that the Coconut Plains was a, a town council push, if that gives you any. Right. That you just and the playground, and council. nobody spoke up. The playground has artificial turf on it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm amazed. Uh, all the kids play down there, and that's all artificial turf. Yeah. Now, Portia, remember, there was always somebody against it. In the <laughs> end, no matter, in the end, at the, at the end of the day, somebody drives by that school at the top of that hill, and they are so upset that that is an artificial field. 
And as, it just as equally, somebody would be upset if it wasn't an artificial field. So right. we're always going to have people that aren't happy. It's just, it's, it's a consensus. That's all yeah. we do here is we build consensus. And I, I, hey, look, I'm a guy that was, I was so excited about the schools and we, we worked so hard, like four years to get them built. I, I, I doubted that it was going to happen a lot of times. It was just the excitement that the whole entire council was behind it. The RTN, like, so I, I think when you get that consensus and people are excited, uh, it, it's easier for us at the state level. You guys yep. give us, tell us, tell us how much it's going to cost and then we'll be as excited as you are. Right. And yeah, I will tell you the um, piecemealing it. We piecemealed our schools for how many years? And it yeah, took forever. us, it ended up being the most costly referendum in Connecticut history and the most referendums to get it passed. So I'm not for piecemealing. I don't think that works. It just is too easy to delete. And so, you know, I always say, if you, if you really want to do this and do it right, just, you know, you, you, you'd have to get the town to buy in, but you got to get the board of ed or the town council or both would be ideal to be behind the project and then we'll go to work as hard as we can for you and i think it would be awesome for Groton. the one thing i have heard i forgot to to mention and i don't know if this um is even in the mix but i have had people come to me that said if we're going to spend all this money on fields in Groton, and if there are clubs that are using it that are charging for you know, I remember my son pay, played like lacrosse and you had to pay for hurdles lacrosse or whatever. So if they're paying to use the field or paying to for an organized sport, they want the group who is ever using that field to have to pay something to the town of Groton for that use of that field. I don't know if that happens now. I didn't know how to answer that. Um, but I just wanted to throw that out to you. I don't know if that's something that you guys have considered, but People they're saying if I'm my tax dollars are going to use this if somebody's using it and making money off of it I want them to have to pay something for the. I, I agree with that, uh, Senator sure. Summers. I, I I've heard a lot of places. I mean, I know there's a lot of nonprofits, but it's great. I mean, but we're not in a position to to, to just give free field fields either. We do have to have some buy-in and some revenue. And then maybe coming. happening now. I don't know. So yeah. Yeah. And, and there are also a lot of field agreements too where you. Yeah you know, where you can have scholarship opportunities, where you can have non-for-profit at no rate or, you know, two free a year. You can do a lot in the details with your field agreements. As someone who traveled across the state and played on a lot of fields, there were a lot of opportunities. Um, so I would say, you know, just get your plan together and start talking to parents and educators and students. I, you know, student-led, you've got a ton of players here who can say, I'd really like to not travel across the state wouldn't it be great if my team could play more here you know, wouldn't it be great if if the teams could practice at the high school instead of yes. traveling all around town yes um, that's a great point to bring up for people and yeah. i don't think like the average person thinks that yeah. you know they just are not thinking unless your child is at the school well unless your child's like one of my i don't want to yeah. say but like you if they're falling behind the curve on the grade you know, like we brought up in the task force, if, you know, there's no way for a child who's not of age to drive to get to the field at Cutler if they don't drive, if they stay after for extra help. We, we really cramp the, the, the children at the high school with no flexibility or no late bus to get them to practice, um, to, to be able to be academic and an athlete. And, and that's, that's a huge part of the whole thing. So, um, yeah. I, yeah, I, really I remember loading up the minivan with a ton of kids, which is all completely <laughs> illegal to do for high school drivers. Now. <laughs> we jumped in the back of a truck with no, you know, just holding on. But anyway, <laughs> well, I, I think that those points are part of would be part of our bullets underneath our dollar amount. That's just another argument point that we would make for sure. So in, in our specific case at the, at the high school, for sure. What's, what I'm hearing is our task force enough is not enough. We really need to get some newspaper articles out, get some groups, get, get people really revved, revved up and behind this, get some letters to the council, letters to the board of ed, and really try to get this uh, a little bit more than the 12, 13, 14 member body and a few people who say, yes, I, I support you. We really need them to come out and speak up about this. And uh, Do you guys uh, have you, confidence you have your... that you're going to get that 200,000 or is that already set to do your, your plan? Or is that something the council could cut or is that something that you have a guarantee on? Well, here, here's the next point to that, Heather, uh, Senator Summers, that I have trouble with, and this is new to me. I never realized, and now it makes sense to me as a former student and now you know residing here, as a, now a taxpayer, there's a gray area. One of the things that we have to fix in this town that other towns set themselves apart is 
we have the Board of Ed who kind of controls certain fields and we have Parks and Rec that control fields and there's a bit of an overlap. And I feel like we, we were in the position that we're in because there's no sense of like, where is the onus on what fields and where? And so I think it all links together. I think until we kind of separate that in some aspect and say Board of Ed really has to own their fields and their process and and in Parks of Rec have theirs. I, I don't know, it just seems like- You're not gonna wanna know what I wanna say about that. <laughs> I think you should consolidate that. So one person's in charge of all the fields, just like one finance, one IT. It's just so much more efficient. You don't right. have Parks right. and Rec doing this and let Jerry be in charge of it all. But the problem is that right now is there's a bunch of over, it, it, there's a lot of cross content, you know, like there's right. no collaboration in my, I'm not saying people don't work together or don't want to, but there's a bit of like, there's not one person overseeing fields and grot. And, and, and I think that's why we're, where we're, where we're at, in my opinion. You yeah, just decided New England politics. The yes. committee side of things we, uh, we uh, did bring up, like looking at the scheduling and having a one central point to do that at some point. At some point during the committee, we talked about that. It just yeah. would probably be easier for everybody who has to use the fields also, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. But 100%. So, so Jerry, where where is um, the your where are you asking your funding from? So the for the, the parks and rec. The towns the towns budget process is the department requests a, a project. It goes through the town manager. It becomes the town manager's budget that he proposes to the RT or the the town council. Uh, once it makes it through the town council, it goes to the RTM for final approval. So, um, I'm. I guess uh, I, there is no guarantee here that that funding will be approved, but my sense of it is that we have um, sufficiently made our point with the council and the RTM that I think that folks are in support of it, and and as well as the board of ed is in support of that that request for the two hundred thousand dollars of funding for planning. So I'd be I'd be very surprised if it doesn't. Uh, so pass, but but again, there's no guarantee. That's a request from Parks and Rec. You're saying that's a that's a Parks right. and Rec, and, and, and that's back to the whole thing. Like someone else reached out to me and said, "Okay, if Parks and Rec makes a request, how come the Board of Ed, right? When we looked at the the, the assessment needs, the high school was the most needed area that we thought was needing targeting. It shouldn't be on the back of Rec Parks and Rec. Some taxpayers feel that." Parks and Rec shouldn't be the one like trying to generate that only CIP. There should be some buy-in from Board of Ed on that. Why, you know, you might have other projects like equipment and other things to advance our programs in this town. And it shouldn't be strictly from Parks and Rec when it's a high school need assessment mainly. Board of Ed also has a different fund base, which is actually 70 something percent. And I don't have the number in front of me tonight of our taxpayer dollars. And some of that should come from the Board of Ed side. Um, and there's also funds um, that come back from the Board of Ed that come into the town base, into the general fund that could be used towards this. So I would hate to see that amount then create a lag in our program rejuvenation and things that you need to, to, to propel our recreation because you created a CIP to do a, an assessment and a needs thing for the greater good of the Board of Ed as well. So uh, I, that's where I'm, I'm having trouble with the gray areas of, of rotten. Not every town is structured like this. I, I don't want to, I don't want to talk to the board of ed, but I, I know, I think they, they backed off a little bit because they didn't want a competing CIP with the parks and rec. So they, they let the, they let the CIP come from the parks and rec department so that there wasn't any competing um, CIPs and that they would get behind the one that the park and rec put in. Right. And again, and I, 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 I don't want to talk for the board of it, but I, I believe that's the way that that um, came about. Yeah, I'm I, I would sorry, leave, I would I've got to run to another meeting. So I um, wanted to thank you for inviting us. And again, I think you heard we're willing to help you as much as we can and um, we will be in touch, but um, I do have to run because I got another meeting that I'm a little late for. So we'll see you Senator. I hope you uh well fashionably late. Fa yeah, I know. I'm always the running. Okay. So we'll talk to you later. And uh, if you need Thanks help so with much. we are Groton residents, we can help advocate for the CIP to stay in the budget if if or the money for for your uh, plan. We'd be probably I would be happy to help with that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Have a thank, good you. Night. thank you. 
right, but I think. Go ahead, Joe. Who, me? <laughs> no, I think Portia was talking. It oh, just, no, I was somehow just Joe's I, lit up a little I, bit. I, 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 sorry, Joe. Joe, we, we, oh. we must look alike or something tonight. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just think that's the bigger problem is that it's it shouldn't be one backs down so one can take the lead. We got to figure out a way to streamline this. And I don't think in my time on council, I'm going to be able to fix that. But I think it's a town issue. I, I don't and, think you can fix that, Portia, just because when the, when the town was building the schools, they, they take the amount of students and divide it. And that's how many square feet of playing space you can have. They, the, you know, the, the, the state match for, for a music room is based on student population, just, just like the fields and everything else. And I think the park and rec, it, I think it is in the right hands. I think, uh, you know, Jerry going to, to you asking for the money for the study. Uh, once they, once you guys have an artist rendering in a location, that's when, that's when everything goes into hyperspeed and, and, you know, people like me would, Obviously, I'm I'm a field guy. I always have been, but that's when you start getting people excited about it, and and then you know how it is. You got to keep your head up because people are going to absolutely destroy you, saying it's COVID and why should we spend any money? It's it's crazy. You're going to hear all those arguments, and and some you know there's some basis behind them. We, we, there are tough budgets, but you know that's that's just part of the game that 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 mm -hmm. we're in, and that's you know don't get don't just get discouraged and don't try to. I don't think you can change that path. I really think it's going to be, no, no. it's going to be park and rec that drives this. Yeah. And don't worry. I still got 50 mean emails on the ledger fields that people thought it was a complete waste of state and town money. <laughs> so you're not going to convince everyone, but it might be important for this group to reach out to board of ed too. If the town manager starts getting a little tight or Portia, you'll see it in council. If the board of ed can stand up for the project in the public hearing before council and yeah, RTM to say, hey, this is really important and we're doing it. We support this as well. You know, I, I think kind of in our world, it doesn't matter what pocket it comes from as long as people stand up for the project. Yep. Definitely no one that we've spoken to has any issues with any of this project. Mm -hmm. You know, the turf, natural grass, synthetic. Again, I think we're, that's five steps down the road. I mean, that's part of the study. That's part of the cost. Um, that debate is probably way way early in the process as as we've discussed but um no one everyone that we've talked to we we've, we've we've talked to the rtm obviously in the council and we're trying to get lined up with the board of ed at the end of the month um to present to them as well um but we've talked to them they've had members on our board they they have members on our on our group on our task force so I've known you for a long time, Frank, and all you hang around with is people that coach sports and play sports. So <laughs> <laughs> you need to go talk to some other people because this, <laughs> there's going to be a group out there that's going to fight like pit bulls not to have those fields put up. Yeah. Uh, and, you, and you just got to be prepared for it. But I, I always say surround yourself with, with like minded people, get it going. And then once you get the, the once the steamroller is going, uh, you can really roll over groups that are, that are fighting you because. Yep. You know, once it's out there and people are excited, it's, it's hard to stop that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and I try to go to the people that we know. I, I, I haven't been on the council for four years now, but I can already think of three or four people in my head that'll be out front of those fields with a sign saying, don't vote for this thing. Uh, and, and sometimes those are the people who try to go get first and let, and let them know. But, you know, they, sometimes if you bring them in early, they don't feel like they've been steamrolled. So, you know, that's, that's food for thought. But, you know, I, I think there's a lot of work here. I think I think the budget's going to be tight the next few years, but I also think the project is worthy. And and I and I and I know our town; they've proved it to me that that they will vote for things for children, and they and, and they've done it before. And I think they'll do it again. Yeah, I, don't I, be I discouraged by people who say you know don't spend taxpayer dollars there. Projects that are needed, taxpayer dollars are meant for projects that the community uses. And yes. there's nothing. There are some Joe and I could tell you where they live because we can't pay. We could tell you who these people <laughs> yeah. are. They will continue to not like spending any taxpayer dollars. But you majority rules in these worlds: referendum, council, RTM, board of ed. You just need to get your majorities. And I and I, I agree with you guys. And I think that the, the number one thing for me is that people talk about uh, economic development, TIF, and getting things under the tax rules. As far as also advancing our uh, accessibility to quality education in our school districts, like having the IB program, we talk about how we set ourselves apart. 
if we don't improve our fields, we're falling behind the curve. You know, uh, people, when they come to this town, young people that are in their early 20s, 30s, looking to, to have families, they look at fields and say, wow, my son or daughter is a soccer player, a football player, a field hockey. When they go up to the high school, they're like, wow, IB program. Okay, what do they have for sports field? We look around and those are things that are going to set us apart for track, for you know, indoor track, for swimming. We don't have a pool. So I, I think it's also just an economic economic driver as well, you know, looking at our economy in this town. Those fields show where we put our money. And the fact that we haven't done anything for 20 to 25 years really is starting to set us apart from our surrounding neighbors. Even if we have the IB program or we have this academically, we don't have the fields. And so now it's time to bring that up to code to meet our surrounding towns. Let it be turf or non-turf. At this rate, if we don't get the turf, I'm okay with just improvement of fields in general because we need something. You know, doing nothing is not an option. So well it sounds like you're the lead singer in the choir and uh and you just gotta go outside and find people that don't like choir music and bring <laughs> them in and, and teach them how to enjoy it because um that's that's the only thing that you guys are, 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 you know, this is so early in the process anyway, but I think you guys have a great star. I think that the, the fact that you're going to have money for a study, I think is a great star. And, you know, I, it's good that you're sitting there anticipating problems because, and the reason you're doing that is because you are in the council and you know the problems are going to be coming. Uh, so you guys are, I, I think you're in good shape. I mean, you definitely have my support. And I know Conley and, and Senator Summers just said what she, what she said. So I think, I think you're in a good spot. Do you think it'd be appropriate to start, like, I saw some other towns do, like, Facebook pages, and you're going to get the bad comments and the good comments, but really, just really try to get the word out there and raise it, like, kind of spearhead this. The only, the only thing I would do on Facebook now is saying, we're thinking about putting up fields. What do you think of that? And, yeah. and then, because I, I can tell you right now, the comments that I see, anytime we put anything about fields, are a bunch of parents who are really, you know, engaged right now. And they put up comments and then all their friends go, you know, you're right. I wish I had that feel when my kid was that age. And, and hopefully my grandkid coming up. Had, so you, you create that kind of conversation. And then when you have the unveiling, you you know, whenever that is, whenever the, you'll have an artist rendering after all the studies done, that's when you really go, you go big. And then all these people that have been commenting on this Facebook page, maybe you make a Facebook page that says Parks and Grant Facebook page, like just a little separate page and, and people throw out their ideas on it. You, you may get a lot of good ideas from that, from, from fishing. Okay. Yeah. I need to, um, I have to run. Joe, I got to, our Conte, I got, we got to do a call with our Conte. Yeah. So I'll yeah. start it and you can join when you can. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Hey, Thank we'll you very you much. Guys. Thank you. Hey, thanks for doing Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you. Bye-bye. Well, yeah, they're really all great information. All great information. It sounds like we really need to rise up and get people like we need more outside letters. support. Yeah, we need letters to the council, letters to the board of ed. We need to have like the people that rose up for um, No Ink Gardens, you know, like that kind of support. We need people to kind of really, you know, we, we shouldn't go a day without having a newspaper article or talking about our deficiencies. We need to shine the light on it to our community. Um, I also brought up too the fact that as new developers come in, is there a possible way, and they're gonna look into it, that when they come into the town and we give them say like uh, some help with TIF money or something like that, when these companies make it advance, is there a way that they can donate if we put it in the writing, like donate to our infrastructure, like our sports fields or our, you know, it, you know helping our community as we help them in our community come in. So. I think we really need to let our surrounding community, Dominion, like uh, EB, Pfizer, Navy base know that we are feeling the push and need the help. And I'd be willing to write some articles or get other people rallied around, but we got to rally around outside of just what we're, we're currently doing. We need more numbers. That's well, I, I so, so I agree, Portia. And I think um, one thing that we can definitely take advantage of that we haven't yet is all those youth groups, the, the sports groups that we've been talking to that we got all the feedback, it was basically their desires is what kind of led to the outcome. Um, and I think we've been kind of holding them, we presented to them, but we haven't asked them to go back to their membership um, and their entire lift serves and start pushing information out. So, you know, I think we come up with some sort of a, I, I won't even call it a press release, but just kind of a community update, like, hey, here we're at, this is what we're doing. 
and here's the recommendation and put it out to the presidents of all those different leagues and let them email it out to all of their membership and, you know, encourage them to write in to the counselors or the RTM. Um, you know, I, and I do think, um, so that's, that's one issue to build support for sure. Um, and then the whole synthetic turf thing, you know, we heard a lot from a small group of people about how they don't want to have uh, synthetic turf, but we heard from everybody that we talked to that uses the fields that they want to have turf. Um, and so one thought I had was how do we, you know, how do we quantify that? Uh, and we can't do it like a statistically valid survey, but we could definitely put out some surveys, um, you know, whether it's through Park and Rec Jerry or, or whatever to unofficially at the very least be able to say, you know, X hundred people replied and X portion want, you know, are cool with synthetic turf and X are not. And um, at least be able to have some numbers to back it up because obviously the conservation associates are very passionate, you know, but at the end of the day, there was two people that signed that letter. Um, you know, we, we spoke to a whole lot more than that uh, asking for it. So um, I guess I would just like to kind of quantify that a little bit and, and see, because if the general public doesn't want it, if we put out the survey and everybody says, I'm afraid of these things, then, then we have an answer pretty quickly. But if, if it's 90% one or the other, then, you know, we get an answer, I guess. So, so I would, I guess what I'm saying is I think we should do a letter and push it out to all the sports groups. Um, and then we should do some sort of a survey. And then I totally agree with, you know, articles or getting some, some coverage in the paper and then keeping a kind of having a, a plan for at least once a month getting something out there to kind of keep it talked about. So maybe uh, Jerry's counterparts can give them feedback on the other towns. Yeah. Um, can I just uh, steamroll the meeting here for a second? I'm going to share my screen and um, if I can do this, can everybody see the uh, Athletic Fields Task Force webpage here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this this page is it's actually just a really short page. It's just got you know our our basically the a link to the video and stuff. But this is a page that's on the website that we could actually refer people to to go to to get information. And there's there's you know just with the discussion here that I heard tonight, um, you know from the the our legislative delegation and, and you know just the comments from all of the members. You know, if we take those points and, and we, we develop that web page and, and, and because when we go out to people and we say, hey, we, we're looking for, you know, help on this. And they're like, well, yeah, but I really don't know what to say. Well, here, here's, here's, a, here's an encyclopedia of all the, you know, benefits that we can expect from field development. Just, you know, this is the web page. And when we, when, when we share it on Facebook, there's a link to the web page and, and, and people can go there and see the data on how many people that uh, you know answered Chad's survey on did they want synthetic or not or they can also see the you know the potential economic development from um, you know a series of tournaments or the fact that we can host the um, you know the band competition and all those things that we've talked about all these potential benefits that we aren't experiencing so I think I, I think you know, I guess if, if there was a place that I could use some help would be to, you know, basically provide the content for that, um, that web page. I have the ability to add things to it at basically at will. So, you know, I guess if I can get the members of the task force to agree to send me information that I can post there, you know, and, and, you know, I'll do my level best to make it look good and organize it in a way that is understandable, but you know, that can, that can be a, a start. And, and yeah, Chad. Jerry, is there a way to share just that piece without going to the whole page, just like so that I can start sharing it tonight or tomorrow? Just the link, like a way to get right to just the nit and gritty of the sports fields. And then maybe also get a newspaper article saying, hey, are you aware that Rotten is looking for your input on sports fields? And here's our link. And yeah, um, Portia, yes, I can, I can share the link to that. I mean that specific page that only okay. deals with the athletic fields task force, but okay. you, know, you, can, you you don't have to navigate the town's website. You'll go right there. <laughs> okay, yeah. If if I can get that link, I'll share it tonight. If if there's a way that you share it on the, um, I don't know if it's appropriate to share on the face the rec page or the, your private page. I mean, I 
I navigate as this as a task I mean, force. It's a public, or, it's a public page portion. So I mean, it's, it's. I mean, it. I would, I would encourage anybody to, to go there. Um, I and Frank, I just have a note here that um, Jim needs to um, drop off for a work call. So he has, he's been uh, pretty quiet here tonight, but he's, he's got to go take a, a work call. Okay. All right. So I will, I will do that. I'll share that link and I will um, take anybody's information that you send me any kind of tidbits or pieces of information that we think are helpful to the cause. Let's put it up there. And, you know, the more people that go there and see that and, and use it, and we might even have a call to action on there. You know, you're, you know, if you're wondering how to support this, you could do these three things, you know, go to the council, write a letter to the editor and, uh, you know, Post it on Facebook or something. I don't know, but uh, it would it be appropriate to try to like get somebody if everybody tries to get somebody to write something to the day or you know every like I, I would be willing to take the baton and and get something in and, and my reasons as a former graduate of Fitch why I think sports fields are important. You know what I mean? Like those personalizations are are are, are key. So do you think that would be great to start and trying to get that, you know, every other couple of weeks, trying to have one article that kind of shows up, you know, um, I would be willing to start it if you wanted. You're talking about like letters to the editor kind of thing, even. Yeah. Right. 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 Just yeah. start, if you ask two people, if all of us walk away and ask two people to write a letter to the editor about in support of sports fields, and then those two people ask two people, right? You, you just, sure. you, we got to get in the limelight. We have to get it in the light of the community because the average person doesn't really, they, they think the fields suck, but they're not going to bring it up. Right. right. So we, we really got to make it an issue. I mean, there's some people, all different bipartisan support. I think the more bipartisan support we get, no matter who's on council or who's on board of ed, that's going to be a driver too. Some people go on Lee Elsie. You know, has anyone, if, if you're a Lee Elsie person, go on Lee Elsie and start talking about sports fields and grot. You know, like that's the type of, like type of uh, light we need to start shining. Our task force alone is not going to be able to not. That's my personal opinion. We started it, we got it going. We've been wanting this, we're driving it. But we now need to reach out beyond our walls, right. our community friends, our neighbors, if you live well, in Broughton, you know. Yeah, and I mean, it, based on what we heard tonight, right, and what we've kind of been feeling, and I think what Jerry's been indicating all along is, hey, we probably need it. This probably should be a referendum project, right? The CIP budget hasn't worked. We, we need to do the referendum. The referendum would definitely help as far as the state delegation goes because it can be kind of just a one project all in fund it once and be done um and the only way we're going to get through a referendum is you know if we get wide support across the town so um you know yeah we got to start now and it's got to be a lot more than the 12 of us um that feel passionately about it so the sooner we start the the better the chance of building that wave of consensus to be able to pass a referendum you know if and when that comes around. Jerry, you're gonna send us the link? I will, yeah, I'll send you Perfect. that. That's good. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, when I get that, I'll start sharing it myself and getting it out there. So. Jerry, maybe you and I can work together to try to get like a, a one pager or something. You know, like I, I feel like we need the, the executive summary, right? Like the, yeah. here's the, here's the elevators, you know, pitch that it's a one pager, maybe it's front and back if it really has to be, but just kind of the main points and uh, it, that's easy to share yeah, as an image on Facebook if it needs to be and easy to pass around to everybody to have talking points. I, th I think that's a great idea, Chad. And then even if there's a link to like your slideshow on there, but just like you said, highlighting those. So, cause the average person doesn't want to do all that work. They're tired, no. you know, they, they want to read quick. Yup, I agree. And if I want to look later, I'll click the link. Correct. And I can start sharing that, you know, Groton Community Forum. Like we can start blasting it in the parents, uh, Groton School parents. We can start putting it in the paper. I, I mean, once I have the link, I could put an article and 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 say my opinion, and then put the link on there and get other people maybe to write letters. Uh, so um, that's good. Um, back to Chad's point. Should we um, at our next meeting or at the, maybe the meeting after that? start inviting back those youth groups um, and the user groups into the, um, at least the, at least the 
presidents or the organizers of those groups um, present them the plan so that they can start uh, working with their members um, to promote promote the issue? I think I think that's a great idea, uh, Costa. You can call me Rich Porsche, by the I'm way. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> coach Costa, the throwing okay. coach. At one that, that's fine, too, but <laughs> I no, still but call I, Coach Sharples Coach Sharples. Yeah, Sharples. I, I, um, I think that's great because if we could bring them back and say, hey, here's where we're at. Can you guys now take this link and run with it, have that one page ready, and tell them now, start flooding with emails, start flooding the town council, the board of ed, newspaper articles. We need people to be as passionate as we are. I think that's a great idea to bring them back in because they would be the drivers of all those different little subgroups. Uh, that's my opinion. We need thousands of people to rise up right now. That's what Ledger had happened. And people were like, okay, whatever you guys want, let's do it. <laughs> and can we push that same kind of one pager through, you know, Fitch Athletics to all the parents of, you know, any field sport or especially in band and, you know, all of that to it, maybe, I don't know if you can advocate one side or the other or not, but at least get the information to say, hey, this is what's going on and, and you know, get it out there. Yeah. Yeah. As, as all these ideas are coming up, I'm, 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 my wheels are turning and I'm coming up with different things in my mind. But as Danny will tell you, it's been extremely difficult this year to meet. I haven't had, I haven't had a booster club meeting with parents. I haven't right. had any. We cannot even as a group meet, um, get all the teams together in an auditorium. We can't, we can't do any of that stuff. It's just, uh, um, and, and half the teams aren't even meeting at all because they're not participating. So we, it's, we can't it's even get very the difficult. Together, right, What's yeah, I, I invited them the on the emails. And, yeah, uh, I know. And, and how much are we getting? In? And then they're not, they're not showing up to the general meeting. Yeah, I know, I know. So, you know, our booster club meetings about as many or, or less than the amount of people we have here. So um, it's very difficult to spread the word when you can't organize as a group or even get into the same room with people. Mm. So, but I will definitely that, at least that's send out an email about it. Uh, one of the obstacles that we're going to have to overcome, but I think it's going to get better and better as the seasons go on. It, it sounds like the spring is going to be better than the winter as far as um, organizationally and being able to meet as group in groups or as groups. I mean, all my coaches' meetings right now are just like this in Zoom for preseason. And it's just not a good way to spread word in the community about anything. Um, just, it's just, hard to get them excited. But what, what, one thing, um, one thought that just came to my mind was if, I, if somewhere on that Facebook page or, or um, that you're talking about was maybe a signature page where mm -hmm. people in town could put their names on it. Like, hey, I support this. Yes. <laughs> people can look at the names of the people that are supporting it and yeah. oh i know him and you know and or i know her and that's a great I, idea she's with this group and they and, the, and they support it yeah i'm on board i'm going to sign it too yeah. you know that kind of thing what's what what's the thing that was used where where some athletes I, I signed a couple and i can't think of the link and i apologize i still get chemo brain um where you um a couple athletes use it and other people have used it where they were like, we want to start practicing um, COVID like at Fitch. The, the, I think it was a softball team had a petition going around. and It was, people, probably, it was probably field hockey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forget the name of the little link, but it was, it was great. Someone started it and it was like rampant, like running, running, running. Like everybody was signing it. It got to like 2000 signatures in less than a couple days. Like there are these free little links that you can start and just send. Like, are you in support of athletic, you know, field improvements in the yeah. town of Rotten? Just something very generic, not about how we're going to fund it if it's turf or grass, but are you in support? Right. And and then we can talk about the fine detail after and really get in, the drivers. In the one pager thing, and maybe I could have some kind of a link of, hey, this is what it means for the schools. You know, yeah. you're going to have your games uh, here at the school. You're going to be able to practice, practice at the school. You're going to have practice. This, Big you know, so so I am thinking about it. I'm just being quiet tonight. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> and another town out in Litchfield, I think, they, they actually had a group rise up, a bunch of families that wanted repairs on their fields. And I think they fundraised. And I'm not, I'm not sure what we can do since we're like kind of appointed by the council, but they rose, to get, rose together, contacted local community, and they raised $100,000 from local communities like Pfizer, EB, those types of things, uh, even like private owned restaurants and things that said, here's 50, here's 100. And they came before with all the signatures and the petition. They said, look, here's $100,000 and here's 
like 3000 signatures of people who want sports fields. Now I'm not sure how we can do that, but I really think that there's a lot of untapped resources of things that we can do. And I'm not sure what we can do amongst this task force, but. Well, Rich and I are gonna work on what does this mean for our schools uh, link. I mean, if we have to get old school and start selling candy bars and say, this is for our improvement of our sports fields, you know, dollar a bar. I mean, I mean, but there's nothing like we to say that we don't have the money or the thing, but there's like the school, Fitch High School could be having an ongoing fundraiser year to year or those funds, the Board of Ed could have a fundraiser started where they're selling Yankee Candle and candy bars. I don't know, I'm going crazy, but something <laughs> to start, you know what I mean? Driving that fund like they do for playgrounds. It's not unreasonable. Those haven't even started. You know, it could be it could be Fitch High School pale, you know, shirts and hats, and and you could tap into all the alumni. I'd buy a couple things, you know, you know, like there's a lot of ways we could drive fundraisers to bring in funds to people that are still here that would want those fields improved, and it doesn't have to be on the backs of the taxpayers. It could be fundraisers of of different things, and it would look really strong to the council, to the board of ed, or whatever to say here's $200,000 or, you know, elementary schools fundraise for their own playgrounds, you know, like, I don't think it's unreasonable. Where is that drive? Where's that, that, that passion? We got to find it. I, I don't, I hate long meetings, but I do, I do have a question because I, I hear a lot about, and I don't know very much about uh, financing, but I hear a lot about, you know, the CIP or the, or the bond or whatever. Is it possible that it, or the school involvement versus the town involvement, which seems to be a, a big issue. Is it possible that with our project, the schools could um, put through some CIPs for, for parts of the project? And you know what I'm saying? Like, does it all have to be from one source? Like, like could the school put a CIP through to put the lights on the middle school um, or something like that? And so it is part of our big project but it's gonna be maybe taken out if we can get it done before uh, everything else. I don't wanna speak for the school, but my understanding from what I've seen come through from the council is the schools can put forward their requests and someone can correct me if I'm wrong. And then it goes to the superintendent, assistant superintendent and the, and the board, and then they pick what CIPs they're gonna push forward to the council. Right. So- But, but what I'm saying, if, what if one of those CIPs the school decided to push forward was part of our field project? Is that is that a, a possibility, or are we are we just trying to keep this all in one package? I would say it's all good, right? Any money is good money. Um, I just at this point, I, I think what I heard at our last meeting was that Board of Ed was kind of taking the lead from us, right? Letting they were sitting back and saying, "Hey, what whatever you guys come up with, we're going to support you." Um, and if that means I would love for them to support us with an actual CIP project, like the small pieces that they could contribute. Right. Right. Well, or even board and lights, you or, know, yeah, that, bleachers or lights or something. Right. Like, I mean, right. I, if if because because Jay has mentioned that, you know, Jay uh, Wheatloff has mentioned, um, you know, in, in he's an advocate for this group, and yeah. he's on the school board. So yeah, I mean, I think I think the middle school field is a perfect opportunity for that, where we all know that improvements should be made there. It's already school property. It's probably easiest that that's just done if they can fit it in their budget and they can advocate for it definitely that's going to be the easiest it would not want to come out of a park and rec budget that would i don't right. think that's ever happened in town that a park and rec would fund something to be built on a school property but um but by no means should we wait right like if they're willing and they know the needs now and they can fund it for next season then then let's do it you know um it's just the bigger stuff when you start adding you know extra zeros behind things that i don't think they're going to put it in the cip budget and i wouldn't want to like try to take something out of a bigger project and a promise that it might be a CIP down the road. But, um, but the middle school, I think is a perfect example that if they, if they understand the need and the need is current and they want to do it right now, then I, they should use our data as the reinforcing that they really need to do it. Hey guys, right, when you I, have to, I have to go to another meeting, but I don't want to leave if it's going to drop your quorum or anything to, to promote discussions. No. So it's day. No, I, I think we're both pushing our, 8.30 limit as no, well. But I, so. I don't want to cut you guys off. I'll stay no. in this one because that's the one I started on. But if I can get the tail end of another meeting, I will. But I will stay if you guys want to keep going. I'll stay on. Yeah. 
Frank, I think maybe at this point, um, you know, I think we, we do have uh, quite a bit here that we've talked about that we can actually get done. Um, I will follow up on the um, meeting with the Board of Ed to see if we can get a, a, a firm date for that. But yeah, for our next meeting, I think uh, we have all of these things that we've talked about doing to get the, to get, get the word out. I think that's something we ought to do. Um, so, you know, I don't know, we can sit here and talk all night, but yeah. 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 And I'm going to yeah. send a letter. I'm not going to speak on behalf of this task force. I'll speak independently. And I'm not going to speak as a counselor. I'm going to speak as a former high school student of Fitch and a Groton taxpayer and just speak has it's not for turf or not for turf, but just basically the need for field improvement as a whole. Right. And I'll start right. there. And if anyone else wants to jump on, I'll get a couple more people to send letters. But that's where I'm going to right. go. Awesome. I won't, I won't speak on behalf of this task force. I'll speak as an individual. Damon will send a letter too. All right. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, so our next meeting should be the third week in March, which I believe is the, I'm looking, is the 18th. So we'll meet at seven o'clock on the 18th and we'll continue on and see how we, how we do in the next month. It's passing, getting the word out there. Our, our mission <laughs> through hook, crook, or whatever it takes. All right. Let's Anything see. else? We're good. Uh, I guess I need a motion to adjourn. Sure. I'm at the motion. Okay. okay. Second it. Perf Bruce is second. Got it. Bruce, Thank you yeah. very much. Good night, everybody. Everyone have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Appreciate everybody. Bye.